Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. If you don't know our host, David Ham, he's a 25-year NASCAR veteran, engine builder, and jackman. Live every Monday evening, we have a new guest. From the racing world with their stories, their paths, their their racing racing roots. Join us live on YouTube to ask questions or comment at DHAMIM. That's DHAMIM on YouTube. Also tune in on 92.9 FM. 550 AM or WAMERadio.com. Sponsored by Jersey Cape Yachts. Check them out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and their YouTube channel. Also on JerseyCapeYachts.com. Check out my website, DHAMIM.com. Be sure to hit that subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you'll be notified every time we go live. Now, here's our host, David Ham. All right, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. And we are here live in the Randy Moran studio in beautiful downtown Statesville, North Carolina. And I uh, hope you all had a great day. It was a beautiful day here. It's uh, in the 60s and a little bit uh, a little bit breezy all day today. But it didn't. the rain went away. All right, I'm joined with by Phil Cavalli and then Tracy to my right. And then I've got Jared Johnson in front of me. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. Yourself? I'm doing great, man. It's, been, it's good to see you. It's been a while. It seems like it's been forever well i saw you about five or six years ago but before that it was probably 19 or 2000 ish 2001 yeah early 2000s yeah something like that so because we had our mutual friend blaze alexander yep and when he passed away we went to the funeral and and then we went back for did you go back for the golf tournament the yeah, I went back. They only had it, what, a couple of years, but I yeah. went to the originally to the first one. Yes. And then uh, I believe I missed the second one. But um, Yeah, I did too. Yeah. Yeah. I always wondered, uh, that's one of those things, if I could go back, I'd like to go back to the second one because I remember Blaze, Blaze Sr. even said, even if I have to come get you, uh, you're going to come up here. And right. so I should have just said, hey, come get me. <laughs> but you know <laughs> how that goes. Same cockpit down here to pick you up. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I was, uh, I think at the time then I was actually working out at Bill Davis Racing. So I was in the opposite direction of everything. And I went to work out there for two years right. before coming to, to Robert Yates in uh, 2003. So, but yeah, so um, let's see, we'll start out by just telling about yourself. You know, you're, because um, this show's about you. It's called Racing Roots with Ham, but it's just basically to tell your story and your path in, in the racing world. You know, how you got started, how you, um, your biggest influences and that type of thing. Right. No, um, obviously we came from, you know, a big background of racing, growing up, racing motorcycles, off-road, all that stuff, you know. So when uh, the bikes, when the jumps started getting crazy and, and big and pe- kids were getting hurt. Dad's so you were like, racing bi- bi- motorbikes. Motocross, I mean, yeah. Motocross yeah. stuff. Yeah. Hold on. Sorry, Phil. Just in case people weren't aware. That's Jimmy Johnson's brother. Yes. yes. I mean, no. yes. I mean, you sound just like him. Like I said, you look like your dad, Gary. Uh, right. But I mean, just listening to you now, you can hear Jimmy. But yeah, that's that's when you talk about that's yeah. how you both grew up. Together. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so. We grew up racing bikes. You know, my grandparents owned a motorcycle shop. Dad was there building motors. Um, ended up taking Rick Johnson or his wing, you know, and started taking him racing and, and all that stuff. And then yeah. it just it got us on bikes. Mm-hmm. So, and that was in California. Yes, out in California. you were in, in um, what's the name of the town? San Diego. We're, we're out of San Diego, El Cajon. El Cajon, that's yep. it. Yeah, that's the one I always think about when I, when I think about y'all. So y'all did a lot of – and Ricky Johnson was uh, – I remember – I met him a few times because he come in and actually started racing yep. some in NASCAR. Yep, he ran those truck races and, and he ran a, a several different, you know, yeah. ran around stuff back here. Well, he was kind of a big deal in the motocross back, back oh, yeah. in the day. Oh, yeah. He, uh, was, he was top notch. What's he, he doing now? He's, he does these, um, is he down here? No, he ended up moving back to, to California. Oh, okay. And, uh, he's doing these, um, he's training, um, military, you know, how to ride bikes, teaching them okay. all the different stuff off road and, you know, side by sides, Hummers, SUVs, that mm-hmm. stuff, just doing all those training routes. And he's, he's got a bunch of different going on. So it's pretty cool how he started out doing that kind of stuff. And now he's still doing what he's always loved. Right, right. I he, bet. Yeah. He loves it. Yeah. He loves playing in the dirt. So he's doing a little racing here and there, but mm-hmm. it's just one of those things. I mean, right now to find sponsorship and, and funds to do it, it's yeah, it's it's tough. Right now is a very tough time. Yeah, it's not good. I had uh, Carl Long on here with me last week, and you know he's right down the street, and he's he's one of those that's like uh, uh, hard working, 
self-made, yeah. you know, right. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, finding sponsorships, one of the hardest things. Yeah, that was um, sure. that was one of my biggest problems was trying to lock down the sponsorship. You know, it, it yeah. was it was good at times, and then it's just the, the way that stuff changed throughout the years, it just got difficult. So Sure. But um, – we were racing bikes, and so we went to off-road cars. We raced the Mickey Thompson off-road, that type of stuff. Uh, score, you, you know, the score yes. series, the desert series. Mm -hmm. um, ball 1,000, ball 500, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Chevrolet took Jimmy down his path, and Jimmy ended up moving to Wisconsin to race for the Herzog. So mm -hmm. I, that was in 97. I graduated in 97, and I'm like, I'm out here. So that was in Wisconsin? Yeah, where the Herzog shop was originally. Okay. For some you know, reason. he was racing the off-road truck, the, yeah. the soda truck, mm -hmm. um, for the Herzogs. And then Chevrolet and Herzogs come together, and they started that ASA team. And then they started that uh, Bush team. Bush team. Yeah. That okay. was down in Huntersville. Yeah. So yeah. It, uh, I came back to Wisconsin with Jimmy and came to him to here to, to Mooresville. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was here for a year. Then I went back to California, raced uh, a late model truck. And then I'm like, I'm out here again. So mm -hmm. I came back here for uh, beginning of nine or end of '99 and haven't looked back. Yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, it's pretty nice out here. Haven't right? looked back. Oh, I, I love it out here. It's great. Yeah. Um, it's starting to get crowded. Uh, I mean, yeah. the, the local Mooresville is getting crowded. Yes. I mean, it's the or population's growing around here, but yeah, it's it is what it is. Yep. So you're over kind of in the Troutman area, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I moved up to Troutman just uh, just about three years ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. out in the country yeah. we got my shop out there and do a bunch of different work you know fabricating stuff car restorations uh dirt bike work yeah a whole bunch of different stuff and you got kids they they have bikes yet yep um <laughs> connor connor has a bike yeah. he, he has an 85 he hasn't been riding lately but um we started getting lily on one to cruise around you know at the property at the shop and stuff mm -hmm. so they're having fun yeah and you, you did some of that side-by-side -side stuff too yep i know last one time i saw you your wife was at the chiropractor's office Yep. And I saw you in there and, um, and you were talking about the side by side stuff. Yep. Which those things can be a lot of fun. Yeah. They were a lot of fun. I was, you know, after the, the torque stuff I did in the pro two, yeah. um, the side by side market got really huge. So we started building side by sides and I was racing one in Durham town and uh, I ended up breaking my back. Ooh. Mm. Yep. So that, that was a huge setback, but, um, it was just one of those things, you know, we just came off the jump. We were trying some different spring rates and different stuff, and I just blew through the suspension and the chassis hit the ground. Yeah. So I ended up getting my, my T4, so. Yeah, sure. Wow. So if you're just tuning in on 92.9 and 550 here, WAME, locally in Statesville, we're talking to Jarrett Johnson, who's actually, he's Jimmy Johnson's brother as well, but I've known him for a, a long time, and so has uh, Phil Cavalli over here to my left. And uh, you're listening to Racing Roots with him, and if you'd like to tune in, and uh, comment or say hey to Jarrett or whatever you want to do. Say hey to Phil. Say hey to Tracy. Uh, you can come on to D Ham I Am on YouTube. That's D Ham with two M's. And uh, go on there and just comment. There is two questions already. All right. Scott wants to know, ask Mr. Johnson if he knows Roger Mears. Yeah, I know Roger. And uh, we know the Mears family uh, real well um, between race and the, the Mickey Thompson off-road. Mm -hmm. um, dad was working for bf goodrich and and all that so we got to go down the lines of meeting roger and then uh when i was racing the super light i was actually racing against casey in in the mickey thompson off-road stuff so we know the mears family real well and uh we love them to death they're they're good people mm -hmm. and the second question is are you the younger or older brother i'm the middle you're the middle <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh there's uh there's jimmy you know he's uh four years older than me okay and then we have my little brother jesse that is 10 years younger than me oh so he he, he was the oops but yeah. it, it, it was just one of those things but we love jesse to death he's 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 a good kid he's he's back here working um lives down you know close by but uh he's done a lot of racing on his own and stuff and he's a he's a good kid i miss talking to your dad yep what's he been up to he uh he moved to florida Oh, so he, he's living in one town um, north of Daytona, Ormond Beach. Oh, yeah. We know yep. where Ormond is. Yep. Yeah. So he's right there in Ormond Beach with his fiance. And, Close um, to Scott. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So he has he has his little boat. He goes out and fishes the canals and goes deep sea fishing. Goes down the keys. Oh, that's cool. And uh, he's he has a job too still. So I mean he's mm-hmm. down there. He's helping uh, run an excavator down there digging ditches still. So wow, still going. Yep. We'll mm-hmm. be in the keys oh, yeah. in one week. Yeah, that's right. We'll be down in the keys next week. This time next week. Mm-hmm. So I went to um, uh, Ormond Beach when we were down there, and I actually did one of my shows sitting we there did a video. on yeah, a picnic we did a video. table, mm-hmm. and they had a little. Uh, I guess it was. A, uh, memorial or whatever. He's talking about when they used to race Some type of on, the, on the beach, but of course they were, that was further north from, but there was a lot of motorcycle racing right. on the beach back in, back there uh, as well yep. as down to Daytona and then down to the, uh, hmm. was it North Turn restaurant? I know you've been there, Phil, right? Yeah. The North yep. Turn. North Turn, yep. Yeah, there's a lot of history in that. That's where I saw Henry, Henry Benfield there in February. Oh, yeah, that's right. Turn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Henry. You got to get epic, Henry on. Oh, epic yeah. show. You yeah. got to get Henry on here. Oh, yes. yeah. Big time. Yeah. Well, we've called him, but it just didn't work out as far as getting him on the show. <laughs> nice. You know? Yes. Hey, go ahead, caller. Hey, David. It's Ivan Scopitone. We called in to say hi to Jared and yourself. Hey, How what's up? How you guys up? doing? Good, Who Ivan. Ivan Scopitone. Oh. oh, Simone. <laughs> There you go. How you doing, buddy? Come on, doing that's great. a word that I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to call in. I, you know, I, I tag along every now and then on the show, and glad to see you on it, Jarrett. And wanted to say hello to you and Jimmy and your mother and Jesse, you know, and your family, the beautiful family you got. And uh, it's been a long time since I've spoken with you guys, and man, it's good to hear your voices. It's good to hear you, man. It uh, it's been a while, you know. So, what well, you're out in Arizona now, right? Yeah, I've been out here in Arizona when I left Mooresville in, uh, I think it was 2004. Yep. And I've been out here ever since and, you know, just growing old and getting fat. That's about all I can tell you I'm doing. <laughs> uh, nice. Nice. Re- re- retired, you know. Yep. For <laughs> it's, sure. It's, it's the retired life. I'm old now, so. There you go. So, <laughs> so, Alan, so. you know, I, I really like that you, uh, you, um, did the truck, you know, that, that paint scheme, you know, that from way back when that you know, Chevy Thunder paint scheme that yeah, uh, Butch. Where you restored Butch. Yeah. Yep. Butch, you know, I got a lot of memories in that truck. Oh boy. I got some miles in that truck. Uh-huh. Holy I, roses. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. That thing was a lot of work to do, especially back here, you know, trying to find the right size rod ends, uh, just the parts and right. pieces. I mean, it took forever to find the the right stuff to to bring that thing back to life. But she turned out nice. It's a uh, it's oh, a cool it's piece of beautiful. history. So, what truck are you talking about? Yeah, that the uh, Chevy um, Thunder Nelson and Nelson Trophy truck. Okay, the one Jimmy you know ran in yep. the the thousand in Barstow. I mean, that's the one he he flew off the cliff and down in the bottom thousand. Mm-hmm. How about that? Yeah, I just want to make sure oh, my, yeah. our listeners know what we're talking about here. And they know uh, who Ivan is. And, and Ivan, yes, he he worked at Herzog. I do know that much because he came from there to NASCAR, and that's where I met Ivan, and we traveled a lot together. But uh, Ivan, what's your? Uh, yeah. How did you get? How did you know the Johnson family? Well, I worked for a company that built that truck, Nelson and Nelson Racing, and I actually rode and prepped that truck for many years with Larry Raglan, the driver. And then when we built a new trophy truck uh that one went to jimmy and jimmy started driving that but before that he actually drove the stadium the mickey mickey thompson trucks for nelson and nelson racing and chevrolet way back when and in the 90s and uh that's really when i met jimmy because he drove and correct me if i'm wrong Jarrett. i think it was the nation uh nature's recipe yeah that Uh, was the nature's recipe super light car Yep, for uh, right, Jeff Bennett. Right, and, and I, I think he wasn't quite old enough to drive the, the trucks, and somehow we we kind of snuck him in a little bit early, and boy, did he do a fantastic job, <laughs> as everybody knows, you know. Right. But uh, that's, how, that's how I met Jimmy, and, uh, you know, at the, at the Mickey Thompson races was the first time I met him, and Rick Johnson was driving for us as well. And uh, we had, uh, like I said, the trophy trucks and the, the Mickey Thompson trucks for Chevrolet and oh boy, that's a lot of memories, a lot of fond memories. Absolutely. You know, Jared, I have a, I have a memory and I don't know if you'll remember it. It was at Jimmy's first home and I can't remember the name of the street, but my mother was there. She came from California to visit and you were there. Jesse was there. Um, Jimmy was there. 
it was a big group of us, and she cooked some enchiladas for you guys. And, mm-hmm. and apparently, you know, she's Mexican, I'm Mexican, and she uh, she kind of made it a little spicy. I don't know if you remember that. I know Jimmy paid the price the next day, he told me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't, you can't pass, pass down homemade tamales. That's the biggest thing, especially living back here. So. Yeah, yeah, and they were. Uh, that was one of my fond memories of of us all getting together. And boy, did we! We had a lot of good times out at the lake. You know, oh, you know absolutely. what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, at yeah, RJ's house, good times. all that good stuff. Oh um, boy, yeah, um, yeah. So that's how I, I met these guys, and you know, there it was a brotherhood back then, basically. You know, Jimmy and Jared and Jesse growing up, and Tony and Rose and Jesse and. And Marshall, my son, they spend a lot of time together. Yep. You know, they were really good friends. Yeah, absolutely. And I see you got a beautiful family as well. You know, you know, my daughter Jessie still lives in Uptown Charlotte. Oh, she's I had, still had back no clue. There. I had no clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's still back there doing her own thing. You know, yeah. Got, got a, I got a niece from her, but you got a great family too. And I keep up with you. You know, I, I was keeping up with you on the torque. So that that was pretty cool. That. I love that whole shot, buddy, and you know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> that was time and chain broke on me on that one. That was that was a huge letdown. I mean, we were digging. It was pretty cool having yes, Chad. You were. Hor- it was pretty cool having Chad Hor come up to me and tell me that man, I was doing everything I could to try to get around you, but that was a time and chain failure. It yeah. was just one of those deals, you know. But they're at Crand and you're screaming those motors. You know, they're uh, you're yep. gonna have a motor yep. failure. So it's one of those sure. deals. Sure. Sure. Well, I haven't uh, hated to see it. So uh, stay tuned in and, and go on there and comment if you want to and uh, tell us some more stuff. I will. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jesse, you tell everybody I said hello, me and Vicky, you know, we still watch you guys and uh, and uh, tell Mama San hello as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will, buddy. All right. Thanks for calling, Ivan. Uh, Good talking to you. Thanks, David. Talk Ta- to you later, buddy. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. All uh, right, very cool. So Ivan Scopatone, yeah, he's a he's a character, man. We had a lot of good times going to the racetracks together because he traveled with me uh, even after I left Sabco into the Channel Lock car, Eleven car, all that good stuff. But yep, he was a trip. So he he actually went into. Did you ever do any of the the? Um, well, okay, so Jimmy was the Baja stuff. Yep, you know that's what we were talking about a little bit. But I know didn't Ivan used to ride passengers in those cars? Or the I, trucks, as sorry. far as I believe, Ivan was a co-rider there for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, he might have rode with Jimmy a couple times, um, but the memory I have the most of was uh, a guy named Tom Givis was Jimmy's co-rider. Um, but I think Ivan did ride actually a couple times, okay. to be honest with you. So what is that like when you're riding down through the desert and you see a cow in the middle of the uh, road? <laughs> it's, it's pretty wild. I, I mean, it's... Uh, sure. De- definitely in Baja, it's definitely a huge challenge. Mm-hmm. You don't know what's going to get put in front of you. You don't know if they're going to lay telephone poles across the track. You don't know if they're digging ditches. It, right. It's the unknown, and it always come down to when you see a crowd of people, you just might want to back There's down. There's an obstacle. Yeah. Be on your toes. You, well, you, you I never know? knew that, that they would purposely do that just oh, to make it, it a little askew. Yeah, you, you know, and I mean, it's it's gotten better, but, you know, the, you're racing on these farmer's robes. Yeah. Um, through their farm fields, I mean, their daily life, you're, you're blasting through there. So, but the good thing about it is it brings a good revenue to, to those guys, yeah. you know, down there. So sure. I, I think it's getting better by far. Ivan uh, sent me a text. He apologized for, for saying Jesse. He says he's a little bit nervous on the radio. Hey, it's all good, man. It's, it, it, <laughs> just imagine how my mom feels when she tries to yell at me and yells, yeah. Jimmy, Jesse, the oh, Jared. Uh, yes. Trust me. I mean, <laughs> it's I, all good. I had a brother. J1, J2, and J3. Right. That's right. It. I had a brother that was a year and a half younger than me, so uh, I, I got called Todd all the time, and then he got called David all the uh-huh. time. So, yes. It happens. It does. Did anybody have any questions? No. No? Okay, good. Well, uh, we can just say hello to some of our friends out there. We got Suzette out in California and uh, Phil Cavalli's right here in Statesville. Well, Suzette says she's from uh, only about two hours away from you, just in, where was it? Oh. South uh, El Monte. About two hours east yep. of, uh, How about of El that? Cajon. Back yeah. home. Her home track is Auto Club Speedway. Well, right. you know, in, in California, you're all neighbors, right? I mean, it's a small uh, state. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, uh, yeah. You've been there. You, I mean, there's, there's, it's a vast difference. Yes, of from as, north as out. far as people, but as yeah. far as a lot to do in a lot of areas, it's, it's a cool place. Oh yeah, yeah for sure, yeah. man. San Francisco yeah. area versus yeah. the Los Angeles area, and just in all between that ride yeah. from, from there on down, down through Big Sur. That's priceless. Right. So, Beautiful. Yep. 
beautiful out there and we got kit rodriguez down in port st lucie florida and uh paul as well and mike bear i don't remember where he's from ohio maybe sorry if i insulted you with that but anyway uh paul's out there as well and rachel's down in charlotte she does a lot of volunteer stuff with the nascar hall of fame sissy odell and don clark are here in statesville brian spencer's in pennsylvania and scott trevison's in uh daytona florida or to be to be more specific it's uh the leon springs leon springs yes all right so yeah thank y'all for tuning in if you're on listening to us on 92.9 and 550 you can go on to dham i am and you can see us right here live and you can also make comments ask questions to jerry because we got jerry johnson in here with us but we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back the most important thing you can give your child is a strong Christian foundation. We at Hope Christian Academy, located outside of Troutman, can help provide that foundation by offering an education centered around Jesus Christ. Hope Christian Academy's small class sizes enable our experienced staff to give much needed one-on-one -on -one attention to each of our students. Our school offers a safe Christian environment, affordable tuition, quality education, and accepts Opportunity Scholarship. If these things sound right for your family, then give us a call at 704-528-5555 to set up a tour or schedule your child's free day of education. Quality and durability are the hallmarks of a Bush Hog Rotary Cutter. Their units are designed for your toughest jobs with maximum performance and durability. From corn stalk shredding to roadside cutting or field cleaning, many Bush Hog Cutters have been on the job for over 30 years. There's a difference between an investment and an expense. Perfect for farm use, roadside, small plot and pasture mowing. There's a size just right for your operation. And now they have 36 months free of interest on rotary cutters. America's best rotary mowers are built tough in Selma, Alabama, and sold at the biggest dealership located in Mount Airy, North Carolina, right off Highway 89. Stop by Mount Airy Equipment Company to purchase your new Bush Hog Cutter today or give us a call at 336-786-6240. Hey, we've caught up with Ryan Scott at the Randy Marion Ford store. What's going on, Ryan? Billy Buck, I tell you what, it is always sale time at a Randy Marion store, but I tell you, the Ford store has it going on because we have got 2020 F-150s that must go. I've got them starting at $33,988. That's a super cab, crew cab, four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive. we got plenty in stock. You're probably going by stores where you've seen a lot of asphalt around. Not at Randy Marion Ford. We have got the truck to suit the budget 33988 come see us today while the supplies are still good all right we're back on racing roots with ham right here on 550 and 92.9 wame as well as d ham i am on the youtube channel so go on there and check it out and give us a go on there and tell us hello we got Jarrett johnson in here with us from uh, uh i'm not going to keep referring to you as jimmy johnson's brother but this this is your your racing roots this is this, your story so we want to go back and we want to hear how you how you got started in you actually raced in the nascar series yep as well as some of the other stock car series so right. you know tell us how you that kind of evolved and you got into that right it um it all come down to uh i was working at randy joy's building seats mm -hmm. and uh there was a guy there that was working also uh named dan DePaulo. and uh dan's like let's build a street stop so we ended up getting a car and we put it in the garage and we started building a street stop mm -hmm. well next thing you know um I see a late model for sale and uh billy parker catfish yeah was selling it so i talked to jimmy and jimmy's like yeah man he said you know I'll, I'll 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 get the car for you you put everything else together and you go race so that was in 07 we started racing the the late model up at hickory we we're running limited late model mm -hmm. but um i went up there and ran uh raced actually it was 06 04 to 07 and uh won a bunch of races up there in limited um 07 we won eight out of 16 races four poles you know we were running for the points and we nice. got wrapped up in a wreck and it knocked us out of the points the points deal but mm -hmm. um after that i went and uh or during that time in 07 i was working for michael waltrip doing all interior stuff at mwr you know behind his old house right there in cheryl's ford yeah so we worked on some stuff to uh 
try to put together uh, the nationwide deal, I believe is what it was called at that time. Right. And um, was going to run some cars for him. And then uh, the Butler boys brought those ASA cars over. And so we started messing around with those ASA cars and did some testing for them and all that. But the nationwide stuff didn't work out with them. But uh, they went to the seats. Is that what you're talking about still? The Butler? No, the Butler boys, Ken Butler, uh, okay. the Aaron's. Uh, Aaron's ran oh, okay. the, gotcha. the, the CEO of, yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, I believe his name is Michael Ken, Walters. Team. Ken Butler. Yeah. Gotcha. But um, when all that was going on and stuff, um, geez, man, it's been so long, you know, doing that stuff. Then uh, me and Jimmy were having a discussion and Jimmy made a phone call to Randy Dorton and Jeff Turner. Mm -hmm. Jimmy set up a deal and we all met at Chili's down there by the speedway and uh leaving that meeting after talking and stuff jeff turner looked at me and said go beer yourself two seats send me the bill <laughs> so went back to la joy's and sized myself built my own seats and uh next thing you know i was racing an arca car for you know hendrick motorsports and and gerhardt they kind of took me under their wing and put me that's when kyle crystal off and all the driver development deals going on yeah so i got put under that wing and was going along and then I was doing a, a driver development deal with them with uh, Ken Smith out of Indianapolis. It was the, it's the old ASA cars, but it is it was called ASL. Okay, and it was pretty cool. Butch Miller was my my crew chief driver coach, so uh, I couldn't have learned from the best. I mean, everybody knows who Butch Miller is. Yeah. So sure. When it did all that, and then uh, that with uh, Ken Smith with the, the ASA cars, it took me to run some truck races. So I ran, uh, I had to run the ARCA race at Michigan to get qualified to run the truck race at Richmond. Okay. Which I beat Brett Bodine up on the phone numerous times because he was the, <laughs> he was the head of the rookie, oh, the, yeah. the police yeah. of, of the, of the rookie stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm like, listen, Brett, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not asking for favors, <laughs> you, you know, but it, I'm not, but I am. It, it, it's, it's, it's a tough process. Sure. Sure. That's an absolutely and tough process. They don't process. pull any punches either. No, uh-uh. So I had to run Michigan in the ARCA car to be able to race Richmond, which I got approved. I got wrapped up in a wreck that had nothing to do with me, but they, uh, they approved me. And so I ran the Levi Strauss truck for uh, Ken Smith, which was uh, SSI, I believe it was, and uh, Bobby Daughter, and then uh, ran Martinsville. So we did that, and then uh, we got together with uh, Armando Fitz and stuff, and he put me in his nationwide car a few races here and there, took me to California Speedway, tried to qualify a road course at, car at California Speedway, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. But uh, I ran uh, Nashville for him, uh, Memphis, a, a few different races for, was, before that. Was he with uh, Terry Bradshaw at the time? Was he involved? No, with this him? was after. This after was after that. all that. This was with – he was with uh, the trucking company. Um, it was after that. It was, I got you. It was after that. Yeah. But did all that, and then um, after that process, uh, Nemechek called me, and he's like, hey, I'm, I can't be here at this race. Will you practice and qualify the car? I'm like, yeah, sure. You, you know, he's like, because he's going to fly in the next, that night and race the car. Yeah. So I did that a few times for him, and I actually ran a race for them. But uh, that's kind of a, a long story short, you know, go, going down all those lines. Um, Fought tooth and nail. Uh, I mean, we raced the, the uh, K&N series. We had our own car. We used my dad's work truck to tow a 26-foot enclosed trailer. Uh, I mean, we were showing up with a 26-foot enclosed trailer, my dad's construction truck, just mm. trying to make it, you yeah. know, driving all the way to Dover, I mean, going all mm -hmm. over the place. So it was fun times. It, the, the struggle was real, but that's the hardest thing is what people, I, I tell a lot of people, they, they think I could pull the strings because of my older brother. Mm -hmm. It's no, it, it's actually mm -hmm. a crutch. Yeah. It, they it expect, hurts. they put the test, they make sure that you're going to pass the test, it, especially. It, it hurts because yeah. there's been numerous people. You get Jimmy to get this from Mr. Hendrick. You get Jimmy to get this, you get Jimmy to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not playing those cards on myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. let, let, let me show my true talents, Yeah, you know, and it's, that was the hardest situation with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Jimmy's helped me great, you know, tremendously. I mean, we had we had lows, 
for the sponsor for our late models and stuff you know we, we have had other stuff you know that jimmy has helped me with yeah you, you know pr down to product sponsors was okay. a husqvarna one Maybe. husqvarna yeah. was on my pro 2 my off-road stuff yeah that's right but you know down to gatorade you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. gatorade would send us cases of gatorade so we all had free drinks at the track yeah mm -hmm. all so it's it, it, all, it all helped but i mean it's meant to be my timeline with the racing stuff all happened at the probably the worst time because right when all the manufacturers and everything got out of like the off-road stuff that's when i was behind coming out of the super light and trying to get one of those manufacturers to help carry me along well right. you you entered too into that series in nascar right in the prime of the the 2008 2009 hardship on the economy was right. the worst really tough you you know between seven and ten that was your prime time there right like you said it was really tough for everybody let yeah. alone someone starting up no matter who you name was right in the last 10 or 15 years nascar it used to be if your name was a waltrip or an earnhardt or a yarborough you would probably be advanced into a better ride but you still had to prove yourself absolutely now they look at you oh your name's johnson well you must have money right that's just not that way anymore. No, it's not, it's not that way. Uh, I yeah. mean, my parents fought tooth and nail to, yeah. to, to, to buy, you know, keep us racing and, and buy us bikes. I mean, mom sure. drove a school bus and dad dug ditches. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's just one of those deals, you know, and to see where it's all progressed to where Jimmy's at in, in, in the whole situation and just let alone the whole family together, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah and uh, it's nice to see your dad at the track, just the most casual, easygoing, nicest yep. guy. He's just, I say to people, I say, that's Jimmy Johnson's dad over there. Get out of here! Right, right. Just, always, yeah, always yeah. seemed that way. I think the last yeah. last time I saw him was at 2004. They flew me down with Roush to uh, do engine stuff, whatever. Yep. At Talladega, and he was hanging out the back of the truck. So I just walked over there and started talking to him. So we don't want to ask too much about Jimmy, but I got a question: Is what? How about his IndyCar race? Have you had a chance to debrief on that or hear anything about how that? Uh, I texted him last night. What he thought night. of that? Uh, I texted him last night, and uh, he didn't get back to me this morning uh, till this morning. And uh, he, uh, I said, you know, you'll, you'll get it. I, I just wrote yeah. him. I said, you know, good job. You know, you'll, you'll figure it out. You'll get yeah. it. And he wrote me back. Said, yes, sir. Yeah. So I know. But I mean, I, I know. I'm sure he's quite excited about the whole venture into that. You know? Oh, absolutely. He's he's totally pumped. I'm wondering how his forearms feel this morning, but yeah, sure. It's uh, yeah. he he did a good job. I mean, yeah. he spun by himself, put him a lap down. You know, uh, he got lucky. He didn't get tangled up in that wreck on the on the first lap. Um, but hey, he set out to finish. Yeah. And that's what he did. You know, yeah. I'm totally yeah. stoked for him. Yeah, very cool. We had so, I want to bring something up. Uh, I want to give a shout out to somebody who's listening tonight. Uh -oh. Who's that? A good mutual friend of yours and mine. She's the sweetest lady I know. And you mentioned Randy Dorton. Diane, yep. Diane's listening. Oh, to hey, tonight. Diane. How are you? Look at that smile, <laughs> Diane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's a doll. Yeah, we love Diane. She uh, is a sweetheart. Yep. Very nice. And uh, I, I miss so many people, you know. Yeah. Um, that's been involved with the whole NASCAR scene. You know, I. They, they got a point in time where I just really quit going, you know, oh, yeah. I was like, okay, I've, I've seen the garage. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I've sat in the stands. I've sat in the suites. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah. I, I like sitting at home and watching on TV. Sure. Yeah. You, yeah. you know, and you, you miss one year of the sport of not going to the races and the page will turn and you won't recognize anybody yeah. as people are going so fast in and out, you know, with different sure. teams. It's, yeah. The face has changed so quick. Yeah, and one of the things that, that's amazing is once you get out, they still keep racing. They yep. still keep going, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who said that? Somebody else said that before. Maybe yeah. it was you even, Phil, but no, it's like, it no, me. it wasn't that's you. I think it was good. it was Doug Richard or somebody was saying the one year that they, they didn't go, but they kept racing. You know, it's like you can't – your life doesn't go on without NASCAR, without racing when you're in it. It's like that's your life, you know, right. for but, so many years. But the years. biggest thing that I missed from uh -huh. being out last year and this year so far – the people, right? You know, sure. and, and even over the years, though, a lot of those people have faded away yeah. from the sport. They're still out there. People like Diane. I called her last week. Said, "Hey, I was down this past weekend. Last week, I said, let's meet for breakfast. You know, or lunch." So, cool. Yeah, she's a good people. Yeah. A lot of people mm -hmm. are in the still in this area. Thankfully, that you know were around that time. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Mike Bears, uh, he is actually in Lincoln. Is it Rhode, Rhode Island? Island. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, he, he said that he thinks he wore out the remote yesterday with the Richmond race and the uh, Indy race in Alabama watching 
Jarrett's brother, well, Jimmy, I guess, in the uh, his first Indy race. So mm -hmm. yeah, I was I was pretty I was pretty bummed out about how they had that time slotted with both races at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wore my remote out too, so <laughs> he's, oh. he's he's not the only one. Sure, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. So I know why would they do this slot like that? But anyway, that's an, right. That's oh, another. your mom's watching. My mom. Yes. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, Jared, how were your forearms after the first race at Richmond in the Truck Series? Um, the, you started thirty what, thirty six, and you finished twenty uh, fifth. Yeah, it. Uh, my forearms are fine. Uh, you know, it. Um, I was more mentally worn out. Worn out. Trying to figure out just the whole procedures. Okay, live pit stops. Just, it, just all the stuff. And it, you know, yeah, it's my first yeah. truck race. Yeah, sure. um, I'm racing against Kevin Harvick. Harvick's out there running that truck race with us, right. you, you know, and I mean, it's, I, I went a lap down there and Harvick stuck his window out and he's like, <laughs> he's like, what's going on? You know, he's like, come on. Yeah, oh, but yeah. it, um, it was fun. I, I enjoyed it. Um, Richmond's, I found it quite challenging because of, you know, both exits, you know, mm -hmm. turn four is a big sweeper. And then, you know, coming off two, I mean, it, the wall's there. So yeah. I found it kind of challenging, but. And, then uh, you ran Martinsville that year too. Yeah. So yeah, I loved Martinsville. Yeah. Um, the biggest problem I was having is the brake bias knob kept on putting more rear brake in it. So like I would hit the brake and the knob would turn, hit the brake, the knob would turn. Oh. And so yeah. I was sitting there, my dad was spotting, and Jimmy was up there also. And I'm like, man, this thing's starting to wheel hop. I'm like, yeah. it's it's getting so free in. He's like, put more front brake in it. I'll do it, and ten laps later, it'll do it over again. Mm. And we ended up figuring out that the brake bias knob kept on turning itself to the rear tires. That's frustrating. Yeah, it was really Gosh. frustrating. Yeah. But it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was good times. Well, then in 2009, you ran with the Xfinity Series, Dover and Kansas. Those are bigger tracks, yep. bigger. And then you tried to qualify for Fontana, was it? Yep. Yeah, Memphis. Yeah, it, uh, Dover, Do that's a monster. Eh? Dover was a blast. The good thing about that was is I got to run the K&N race before it. Okay. So it, it got me some good seat time and, you know, kept me, you know, got me up to pace pretty quick. Yeah. And, uh, heck, we went out. I think we qualified like six or 16th and we were running it. We were running fast. I mean, we were as fast as, the, you know, like fifth place. Yeah. Well, it was a start and park car. So they come on at lap six. He said, hey, you got to park it. I'm like, please no. Right. Sure. I'm I, can't like, hear, I can't hear you. I was like, please yeah. no, you know, don't. <laughs> They're so, like, it was no, a start and park car. No, I'm tight. I'm loose or tight. Yeah. And it was a start and park car. So I'm like, mm. man. So mm. I had to park it. But I mean, we yeah. were up to speed. We were going good. Yeah. So, yeah. hey, is, uh, is Janine or Wayne on here at all? Have you seen I them? I haven't seen them. Okay. From Jersey Cape Yachts. That's our sponsor. And I, okay. I, have, to, I have to admit, <laughs> I feel terrible saying that I was only 42 miles away this weekend. Oh. <laughs> I went up to Beach Haven. Yeah. And they're supposed to get a test drive. <laughs> I could have, but they were, I had to come up 72 to 70 and they're right down the, the parkway yeah. there in oh, okay. Jersey Parkway. Yeah. Well, would have been nice, but I was on a limited time. I put 1400 miles on. Yeah. How about that? We got to do a live broadcast from, yes. from a Jersey Cape yacht. That would, yeah. So they have what? 31 to 66 foot, uh, custom yeah, built 33 yachts. foot. Yeah. These are custom made wow. yachts. You know, mm -hmm. it's not a showroom. Right. You, you can bring them your favorite old yacht and they refurbish the whole thing. Nice. Sit down. Wayne Puglis and his wife Janine, they'll set you up there in New Bern, New Jersey. Or the, you know, that's right. Anywhere they even have, you know, they're set up. They're they even have up. apparel. Well, it's this one here. My Jersey Cape yeah. Yacht shirt. Yeah. You nice. can, uh, and the back is awesome. Yes, it is. You can uh, give Janine a call at 609-965-8650. Or you can email her at Janine at JerseyCapeYachts.com. That's Janine with a G. Mm -hmm. That's right. Down to Lower Bank, New Jersey. 2143 River Road. All right, so um, we had a question, Rachel Rodman in Charlotte saying, hello, Jarrett, how did you end up in dirt racing while Jimmy went to paved tracks? Um, I mean, we all, we both grew up in dirt racing. Um, you know, Jimmy raced the desert stuff, and then he was racing the soda stuff. And then um, when all this went down, Chevrolet took Jimmy under their wing and, you know, went down that path to get him into the roundy round stuff asphalt stuff mm -hmm. so that's with me you know after me doing all the asphalt stuff i just kind of found it more of natural of going back off road racing 
So we put that together that deal with uh, with Husqvarna. Uh, we had Chevrolet. We had the Herzogs involved. Herzogs jumped on to sponsor it. Yeah. And uh, we just put together an off-road program. That was from 2013 to 17. So we ran the Torque Series, and it was just one of those deals. I mean, I couldn't pit, you know, get sponsorship to try to race more asphalt stuff. So it was, uh, I met a guy named Jim at, at, at Husqvarna, and uh, he put together a program for us, and we went racing. Okay. Let's see. It's your mom says, as uh, Kathy, oh. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she says, as him, go ahead and read that, Phil. She wants to know, she says, ask him the worst thing he had to do growing up, one of his one chores. Of his chores. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple of them. We had to wash cars every Saturday or Sunday, and then picking up the dog mess is, is that, one uh, of the biggest that problems. That might be it, Kathy, picking up the dog mess Yeah, in the because <laughs> Dad would get home, and Dad would walk, walk the whole yard, and if he found a little oh, speck no. of anything, he's like, you're not going to play. So. Oh. There was, a, there was a few of them, and that yeah. doing dishes. So you were the professional well, pooper uh, scooper. Absolutely. <laughs> Worst thing to do is when you're out there mowing and your bare feet and you step on a canine corn dog. Canine corn dog. Depends on how, how long it's been there. Yes. Uh, you just kind of uh -huh. roll over like a log, okay, now, but if it's fresh. Now, yeah. don't tell me y'all haven't done that and it's mashed all between your toes. Uh oh, it's yeah. happened. Grass uh, in, the yard, in the bare foot. Always had a rider. No. No, I never had a rider growing up. <laughs> I had to push. I did get a job push mowing, and I had to push it a mile down the road, Uphill. and then I, and then yeah, both ways. In the snow. And it's, yes, <laughs> and I made twenty five dollars, and the yard nice. yard seemed like it was bigger than my eleven acres I got now at the time. So anyway, right. That's, Connor says, "LOL." LOL, Connor, <laughs> that's my boy. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yep. What's up, Connor? Uh, Scott's got a question there, Tracy. Scott, please ask Mr. Johnson to tell us a funny Robbie Gordon story, and what does he think of Robbie's little boy, Max? Oh, geez, a funny Robbie story. Oh, um, just one? <laughs> man, I I don't know. Um, Robbie's a good dude. He, he, he works hard. Yes, you know, we've, we've gone to a few parties at his house, and we've had a lot of fun, you know, playing yeah. there on the lake and stuff. Yeah. But um, – as with with Max, uh, Max true talent. I, I mean, he's he's amazing. Robbie's got him going so fast, and you know, up the skill level of different vehicles. It's hmm. it's absolutely amazing. I mean, the kid's gonna be somebody someday. So, Good. which well. he already is. I mean, he's he's a wheel man. Yeah. I always thought Robbie was one of the the best seriously self promoters there was out there. Oh, he was absolutely. always doing everything, and and he's yeah. one of the most versatile drivers there is. And yeah. If you put him in any kind of vehicle he's probably one of the best like tony stewart all around so. oh absolutely you yeah. know now he has this his his uh side by stuff uh stuff he's doing which he's knocking it out of the park with that stuff so yeah um heck he just ran the san felipe 250 i don't know where he ended up finishing hmm. but um he was out there running the san felipe 250 last weekend okay i can give you a funny robbie gordon story because i've been to one of his parties at his house and <laughs> yeah, I okay. took this gal with me and she stayed and I left at the end of the night. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. No, I got Is that not a Robbie oh, Gordon okay, story? Go. <laughs> right. I got one like that similar, but it's not, it's not Robbie. But anyway, another driver, of course. But, uh, well, but I, let's see, I've been at Robbie's house. He had the, the Coors Light uh, pool table yep. with the balls anyway. But he had his own, was it Daytona 500 game, video game, yep. which was like super cool. But we were in Japan and he and I went out just playing video games and went and got something to eat. And there were, you know, you couldn't really go out too far in Japan. Mm -hmm. And um, so he goes over and we're racing each other. And I mean, he just like blew the record, you know, and on the game and all that kind of stuff. And then there was the, a lot of these girls coming there from the, they were the uh, the opening acts for the for the racetrack with the baton twirlers and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> they were just like way young. Anyway, that's another story. But we went to eat sushi. We went to a, a Japanese, a real Japanese sushi bar, and it was uh, me and Robbie, Wally Doll, and back. I uh, believe Felix Sabatis was you with had your us. Camcorder. And uh, yeah, actually, <laughs> I did. I did have a video on my on this YouTube channel uh, of that whole trip from 1996. Wow! Uh, I took my I'll camcorder to everywhere that. we went. Yeah. The big and, shoulder uh, can. It, it's oh, like, really? No, it was it was just a little eight oh. millimeter. But uh, I think it was that first video I ever put on YouTube. As a matter oh. of fact. But we're sitting there eating sushi, and Robbie's sitting across from me, and Wally's sitting beside me, and I get this big plate of stuff that's just like this. Nothing looks good to me, and I'm not a picky eater, 
but my stomach stayed tore up the whole time I was in Japan. <laughs> oh, I bet. So I'm sitting there, and I, I ate the only thing I saw, the shrimp, and then we had the cucumber rolls were decent. So I would eat the shrimp, and I, I was like these eyeballs looking right at me too. <laughs> nice. So I take the eyeballs off and set them on a, on a plate, and then Wally says, are you going to eat those? I'm like, no. And so he starts grabbing them and just eating them just like that, you know. Ugh. And then Robbie was this big bragger, which he is. You know, he's, he's self-promoting. He can do anything, and he's going to have a competition about anything. So he's going to compete <laughs> with Wally on their sushi eating. Well, it turns out Robbie's not a big sushi eater because he was over there. I got video of him spitting the sushi out nice. of his mouth onto the plate. So uh, He would have been voted off survivor. Yes. <laughs> right? But, but the other thing about him, we walked into the into another restaurant and at another time, a Japanese steakhouse, I believe, and he walks in, and you're supposed to take your shoes off at the door and walk in, and he just walks right on in, and they're just looking at him like, no, 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 you know. And then uh, we get on a subway, and he puts his feet up on the on the on the, the seats. Being rebellious. Yes, and oh, they do not like a that. Very bad at man. All. So right. he was out of place in Japan. <laughs> so mm-hmm. anyway, um, but so did you race with Robbie over in the off road stuff? Because I know he did a lot of that. We were there. I, I raced numerous races that he was in. We we're just different mm-hmm. classes. I got you. You know what I mean? So he, he was in the big trucks, you know, the trophy trucks and all that stuff. But, you know, like that, uh, the two years I did the ball 1,000, I was in a class 10 car, two-seat class 10 car. And then I was in a class 8 stock, which was stock body. Didn't, it had all limited to suspension, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, But he was in the big truck class with what Jimmy was in. What's the wheel travel on one of those trucks? Uh, the, like the, the trophy truck that I restored for Jimmy, that was uh, – 18 inches in the front, 32 in the rear. Okay. So nowadays, I don't know what the rules are. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the rules are now. I saw some video of one of those trucks just cruising along, and it's like hitting rumble strips, you know, or, or it's actually, <laughs> and it's just like right over them. Yeah, it's amazing what they do. Jeez. Yeah. Like, with the window shocks and the and the springs and the wheel travel and all that. Yes. Yep. Um, Brett Troutman's asking for a, a funny Kyle Bush story. Did you ever get around Kyle Bush at all? I've met Kyle numerous times um, and uh, was more of like acquaintance with him, but mm-hmm. I've never really hung out with him. Yeah. Was there any drivers that you, you have stories to tell about? Do you have a Sterling Martin story? Did you bring your cowbell? So we, hold on. We got to wait for the cowbell first. I can't. <laughs> um, and actually, we might, maybe we'll, we'll do it after we'll take a break. Commercial. Yeah, we could do that after commercial. Um, we'll ask this one question and then we'll go into commercial. What's Jarrett's favorite vehicle to race? Is there a vehicle that he would like to try to race with? Oh boy! What have um, you not raced? The I've had the most fun in off road. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, um, I, I love the off road cars. I, I'd love to love to do it. Um, but to another vehicle to race, um, you know, I got I got to drive one of those um, rally cars, the global rally class cars. Oh, so. Yeah. But I, I would love to try to race one of those things, to be yeah. honest with you. Okay. Uh, those are kind of the ones that they race on on roads, like out through the countryside. There's that, or there's like the like the Ken Block stuff that he did. That was the global rally cross that was here in the okay. States, okay. you know, to where it would be like part pavement, part dirt, and then mm-hmm. you'd have a joker lane and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, I could see that would be a lot of fun. Absolutely. For sure. All right, so we're going to take a break, and we'll come back with some more questions. If y'all have any questions, you know what? When we come back from break, maybe I'll even take a caller. Uh, if you're listening out there on the radio, stay by, stand by your phone, and I will pick it up. Um, actually, let's do. Let's just pre-screen while I'm listening to commercials. So if you're out there listening right now and you have a question for Jarrett Johnson, give us a call at um, 704-873-9929, 704-873-9929. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Hey, we've got Ryan Scott here at Randy Marion Chevrolet in Statesville. Tell us what's going on now. What is going on at Randy Marion Chevrolet? How about deals? Deals, deals, deals. 2017 Chevrolet Cruze starting at $79.88. Yes, I said that slow, so you got it. $79.88. You will not beat that deal. We've got all colors, LTs, LSs. Come check them out today. And I'll tell you what, you know Randy Marion sells a lot of cars. But I bet there's one thing you didn't know about Randy Marion. He wants to buy your car. We're looking for quality pre-owned inventory. So come see us today at Randy Marion Chevrolet in Statesville. You'll leave here with cash in your pocket. Come see us today. 
Blue Harbor Bank is not your typical bank, right, Doug Hendricks? It's a great little bank. We're based out of Mooresville. All of our board of directors, our employees, and the vast majority of our customers are all from right here in Iredale County. So it's a great place to be. We have a great time as a team. The team here in Statesville consists of Jennifer Jolly and Tara Summers. They are the primary customer service folks for business and personal banking. Uh, Then we have Tom Kincaid as a commercial banker for this area. We also have the best mortgage banker in the area. That's Lisa Colvard, who many people have worked with at other banks. She's been in the market for over 20 years doing mortgages. And then yours truly, Doug Hendricks. And we have a great time working together. There's no competition between our employees for accounts or whatever. And because of that, then we don't have a lot of the issues that some banks have with people doing things they probably shouldn't do just to make a sale. Blue Harbor Bank with locations in Statesville, Mooresville, and Huntersville. Member FDIC. All right, and we're back on Racing Roots with Ham right here on 550 and 92.9 WAME. we got uh, Jarrett Johnson in here with us this evening, and I'm also accompanied by uh, Phil Cavalli and my wife, Tracy, who are taking questions. And if you'd like to ask a question to Jarrett, go on to the YouTube DHAM I Am and just ask away, because we did have a, actually a uh, question here from Brett Troutman. Well, he, it's actually, he it's says, it. what's that? It looks well, like it. okay, he, he just said, tell us a uh, funny Tony Stewart story. So, I mean, we're just talking about the different drivers, maybe this and that. So, I think we decided, um, did we have to do a cowbell or just? No, I left the cowbell in the car, but we can simulate a cowbell. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Ding, 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 ding. Here we go. We would normally ask you to give us your best. How about about a a train horn? David's Mm. got it. (laughs) Train (laughs) horn. All right. We would normally, in honor of the beer man, ask you for a Sterling Marlin story, but instead, how about a childhood Jimmy Johnson story? <laughs> oh. Your mom's got one, too, so anyway, go oh, ahead. Oh, I'm oh. sure she does. She does. Uh, she, That's a good one. Uh, oh, that's not good. Yeah. No, we were coming back. I, like, uh, I don't remember where it was, but we were coming back from uh, racing. I think we were coming back from racing bikes at Loretta Lynn's um, Dude Ranch, and um, me and Jimmy were fighting over over this game, and there's this motorcycle game where you had to make it jump these boxes and barrels and we started fighting over it and the battery fell out of it and Jimmy had the game so I got mad at him and I hucked the D battery at him and ended up breaking off his tooth Ooh. and uh, <laughs> that was not good. Did Dad was trouble? not happy. Oh, oh yeah, I got in trouble. I mean, I've got my butt spanked on the side of the freeway. So. <laughs> sure. But so that, that was a big time right there. But yeah. um, there's uh, I do have a little Sterling Marl one. I was down in Daytona and um, – we were in the same at the same condo hotel thing we were at, but all I've seen that guy. All he was his name was putting down Coors Lights, C- CLs nonstop. So, oh yeah, yeah, and he's a hoot. Yes, he gets oh, his yeah. he gets his Coors Lights. I mean, Scott uh, Beer Man, he's told some stories about um, Sterling at needing more beer. More beer. Yeah, it's like, room. man, yeah. how did you go through these twelve cases of beer already? You know, this right. weekend, Friends. that kind Friends. of stuff. Well, that was the other thing too. Is we went, we went to that uh, Jamaican beach bash when Jimmy was in the Bush series. Okay, two thousand two. Yep, I was there too. Yep, Sterling went. What well, Sterling was there, right? I, I believe I, he was. I can't remember. But Horner, I know Brett Bodine was there. Maybe. Yeah, Horner Day was there. Well, they yep. ended up they ended up shipping their own Coors Light all the way down there so they could have Coors Light. Oh, okay. So mm-hmm. at the resort. Yep. How about that. Was there. Well, yep. and here's another one that we've um, we were mutual friends with Blaze Alexander. Yep. So. You know, we, uh, the first time I met you, we were, I believe we were coming back from Dover and Blaze was like, Hey, could you give me a ride home after, you know, the Dover race? So we get back to the airport and I'm, yeah, we get in, we drive up and then I met you up at the uh, gas station. I'm like, well, it's not too much further. I can take you on down to the house. And he's like, no, my buddy Jarrett's going to meet me yep. up there. And so then I met you from the car, right. from the truck or whatever. And then Blaze got out, but Blaze was a character. So yep. I put a picture of um, when I was his Jack man, and we had a. I put it on Twitter okay. one time, and I think you commented on it too. But I know Jimmy commented on it, and, yep. and Brad Keselowski commented, and Brad said he was a fan, you know, from back in the day when he was going to the track with his dad. Right. And uh, because this was way early, you know, Blaze Alexander. What year was he? He died at Charlotte in the Arca race, which I would have been there as his Jack man. But I had a wedding to go to in Wilmington. Yeah. So I was trucking it out to Wilmington for that. And so, you know, it ended up happening and it was a terrible thing. 
but um, I was trying to think what year that was around 2000. No, um, 2000 when he was killed. 2001. Oh, one was when Blaze was, was killed. Yes. Yeah. So and that was my the year I decided. Okay, that's it. I'm getting off the road after this year. Yeah. Uh, but I had this um, car that I had him sign before. Yep. Before, but Don't yeah. drop it. Yeah, oh, yeah. I know, right. And so uh, whenever there it is, it's one of my prized possessions. It stays. Not even got a lot of dust on it. It stays inside a glass cabinet, and he signed it for me. Uh, but we we went up to. We went up to, uh, let's see, his funeral, of course. Yep. And I was riding with you and and Jimmy. And uh, we, I think this was the year after when we went up for a golf tournament. And I was riding around with y'all. And we ended up playing golf and that kind of stuff. And, and uh, we got to go hang out on the farm. And also, Ricky Hendrick was with us. Yes. And uh, we were shooting skeet and all that. And Ricky was just getting into his Harley Davidson dealership. I believe it was a Harley. And so I was like, hey, so if I come up here and I say, or he was going to hook me up with some kind of deal on a Harley, whatever, you know, just talking. <laughs> so, yep. uh, but then we all, you know, that ended up, man, we just had some people that we've lost, you know, and I saw Felix Abadis at, at the, uh, that funeral and he's like, we got to quit meeting like this. Right. Cause there was, you know, Kenny Irwin yep. and then there was Blaze and then, Irwin, and then Ricky yeah. and yep. yeah. And it's all after, right after Adam Petty 2000. Yeah. Adam Petty was the, yeah, yep. that was a tough one too. Yeah. So uh, but uh, who drove the twenty eight? The blonde haired gentleman. Oh, Kenny Irwin. Kenny, Kenny Irwin, Irwin too, lost yeah. uh, Tony yeah. Roper. Tony Roper. Yep. Yeah. In Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's yeah. there's a lot, and, lot, and of, thank, lot of lot. Thank goodness the safety measures have been taken. We haven't really lost one since. Right. Uh, absolutely. I, I mean NASCAR's you gone. Think about it. Twenty years. Gone. I was, I was and beyond. Yeah. You, know, you look inside those cars now, and it's like a perfectly enclosed cocoon compared to. 20 right. years ago, it was a bucket seat and some straps. Yeah. And right. Jimmy was one of the first to run the Hans device. Mm -hmm. And he had a spare one. And we tried to get Blaze to wear it mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. try to get it to fit in the seat and, and all that stuff with him. But he just, he wasn't comfortable with it. Yeah. I know and, he uh, really cared a lot about Blaze. Yeah. He was, he was my buddy. Yeah. And, and, and I remember last time I saw Jimmy, it was, we were getting, I guess we had just gotten back. We were leaving the airport from from the uh, the the first whatever the golf tournament and all that stuff. Yep. And I remember Jimmy looking at me and gonna say, "Well, I'll see you later." But then it was like, okay, it was almost like he's thinking, "Well, am I gonna see you later?" And I haven't seen him since. It's been yep. that long ago. Yeah. Um, but the uh, I almost forgot. What I was gonna say we had. Um, oh, your mom was mentioning. Uh, she said, "Ask him one rule." Mom told the boys that they never do with their racing equipment. Never throw it. Never throw your Number racing equipment. Rule. Never throw your helmet. Never mm -hmm. throw goggles. Never throw gloves. Yeah. No, that 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 protects your life. Yeah. And you need to treat it like it means something to you. You what know. About um, your temper. Do you ever talk about your temper? Or, you know? My temper. <laughs> Anyone's. Oh, oh, oh absolutely. absolutely. Well, Mom say never throw your temper. <laughs> right. Right. Never. But, yes. uh, temper tantrums uh, and things. That was a big thing, you, you know. So it um. I kind of frown at it, you know, watching mm -hmm. people throw their helmets or any of that type of stuff. You know, I'm not sure. I'm not a big fan of that at all. Right. Yep. Definitely. It's not, it's not good sportsmanship. You're supposed to learn that early on and you learn that by, uh, it's, it's kind of like part of getting along with other kids when you're in grade school. But if your parents are like always letting you get your own way and stuff, right. then I think you grow up, um, having tantrums i mean wait till you get to the pits and knuckle up and go at it yeah. uh, i mean just get it out that way why get out of the race car and put yourself for get get out of the race car and put yourself on the track where cars are going by you and have a opportunity to get struck or something mm -hmm. you know it's just not cool yeah i know that's not cool at all all right so you um who, who would you say in all your your years of racing would have been your biggest influence i mean because <laughs> you know jimmy got into <laughs> racing too i mean who who was the one that said, even for him, it might be the same person, but said, hey, we're going to go racing? Oh, man, there's there's a lot of people down the road. Um, I mean, was your dad? You know? My, you know, dad, you know, has put in a lot, you know, one of the biggest influences, yes. Um, along with my journey, you know, dad volunteered his time to – help get us to racetrack, you know, driving semis or whatever, you know, he'd always jump in. Mm -hmm. When we were racing the, the off-road stuff, dad drove the hauler, you, you know, fed everybody, took care of all that, you know. Um, 
I wish mom would have came to a lot more, but mm -hmm. she's she doesn't like being around the yeah. the cluster of the hype. Uh, of the hype and stuff. You know, mom's mom's chill, but yeah. um, dad put a lot into help me and you know, like I said, driving the haulers and helping prep and you know keeping things going. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, she's she's tuned in and, and watching you, so you know. She's still your biggest supporter. Right. <laughs> I know she is. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. Yes. And so Mike Bears asked. He he says I think uh, Jared would have fun time racing in, in Robbie Gordon Stadium Super Truck Series. So even though growing up out in California and being more into off road trucks and motorcycles and stuff. Growing up, was there a NASCAR driver that you may have been attracted to or liked growing up? I was one hundred percent Del Earnhardt fan. There you go. Okay. He was he was my hero. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny because Jeff was Jimmy's. Okay. You know, so it's uh I, I was a one hundred percent Del Earnhardt fan. Yeah. Big time. And my parents don't like it. You no. know, nobody, nobody liked it because he, he didn't care. He would, damn, if you want, yeah. you roughed him up, he'd spin you out. Right. I'm like, yes. Did yeah. you ever get a chance to get around him? Or I've never got yeah. to meet him. Yeah. You know, I've hung out with Junior quite a bit and stuff, and yeah. uh, but I, I've never got to meet him. Yeah. It's a bummer. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I remember when you're at, uh, I guess it was Daytona, where he was pitted behind us, and I remember seeing him getting up on his lid there, talking about Dylan Hart. He got up, upside down. 97. And then they got the car flipped back over. He comes in the pits. Yeah. And we were like, man, he is done. But no, they get this big old duct tape, slap it yeah. on the hood. <laughs> right. And, I, and I was standing right there in the pit stall. Oh, because yeah. One was, of my photographers on the backstretch, Jay Jagler, called yeah. in. Well, Deb Williams was up top and said, Earnhardt's in the ambulance and going to the, the care center. Mm -hmm. And I headed to the care center, and one of my photographers says, you know, we always called him FYI after that. He come over and he cued the mic. He goes, Phil, FYI, Earnhardt got back in the car, and Deb come out and says, "No, Jay, he's he's in the ambulance." And Jay says, "FY, I'm just FYI. I'm telling you what I saw." Yes. And I stopped and I thought, well, if he did go to his car and he's driving it, I'm going to go to the pits, and I yeah. got a shot of him yeah. uh, when he came in and he come to a stop. That whole hood was all scratched around his head area and stuff, and he looked like his eyes were like a cat when you open a dryer. Right, <laughs> but he was like, "Let's get this thing." And I just took Laser a couple focus. pictures and stepped back. It was intense. Yeah, that's cool. Well, if y'all don't know, it's a Phil Cavalli, and he was a uh, NASCAR photographer for the Winston Cup scene. And so Phil's Good been around Winston Cup scene many, many, many years. Paper. Yeah. Took lots of pictures and uh, got a good bit of pictures of you with Earnhardt. And then one of the coolest pictures ever is the one where. Uh, I guess Earnhardt won the race, and he has a champagne bottle, and he's grabbed you by your long hair at the time, <laughs> and he's got he's pouring the champagne down. Well, I asked him for a sip of the champagne. I said, "Are there any champagne left of that?" And he, it was on the championship float in '94 in Atlanta, and he just poured it. And two photographers got a great photo of it. It's nice, really cool. yeah, it's classic. <laughs> yeah, my claim to fame with Earnhardt is he ran over my foot in a pit stop, but I don't even remember what race it was. And it didn't hurt. It's just one of those things where it ran over and it's going by so fast and yep. it just clunk, clunk, and that was it. When he got back over the wall, he took the shoe off and put it in the box. <laughs> <laughs> David, nice. Don't ask. I don't ask. have, man. <laughs> why, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> right. It's kind of like that one, the picture that you've told that story a couple of times where you got, you didn't, the guy that didn't get the picture and you were like, man, where did you get a picture of that? Oh, when I was in the pace car. 97 at Daytona and I was hanging out the passenger side and Mike Skinner was on the front row and Earnhardt was on the outside front row and Earnhardt come alongside the pace car and reached out and high five me and I said to That's the guy cool. in the back seat I said did you get that and he goes <laughs> No, but I saw it. Oh, <laughs> no. And that's Ernie Mache, and I could call him right now no, and put him on the no, air. Yeah. And he would have to take, he'd know why I was calling. What do you want? And it's a, this has been, what, 25 years, right. you know, Ernie. Never let that go. Yep. You, that's know, cool. you could have got Sam Bass to draw you a painting of it. Oh, uh, he, he drew me one of me, and yeah. you saw that. But not, not, yeah. that, that would have been a good idea. Yeah, yeah. it would have been. Uh, yes. But he took one of your photos and did a picture of, I mean, I, well for in 1998 because i'd given him photos on and off he sketched this black and white picture of me it actually looks like i'm hanging onto the roof for Earnhardt's car with a camera in my oh, hair that's hand cool. flapping along oh it's great that's neat. Yeah. oh yeah so um so speaking of uh, famous for different things we've got uh, dickie dennis is tuned in with us finally here and if you remember dickie dennis was the 
Infamous fence climber in 2014 at Richmond. Oh boy, I remember that. Yes. He's been <laughs> so, tuned in since yeah. the He's trying to he climb Everest right now. He's looking for some <laughs> funding. <laughs> right. yeah. Oh, yes. that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, so he's got some really cool pictures of him holding his holding his arms up, but it wasn't like a victory holding his arms up. So and he climbs freeze. I think he, well, I think he said he had a couple beers, or whatever. Okay, two it's beers. Promo. Anyway, so he goes and cl- decides he's going to climb up the fence because he's going to get a better picture of the of the cars going by. He wanted to get the four car. He wanted to get a selfie. So he takes his cell phone. Well, he didn't take his cell phone. He forgot his phone. He climbs up on the fence, and then he's sitting there, and he's like, okay, well, now what am I going to do? Oh, i got to take the selfie. So he reaches down to get his cell phone. No cell phone. So then he throws his arms up like, what am I doing? I forgot my cell phone. <laughs> and that's what the picture jail. is. Yes. So. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Uh, how many so, nights he spent in jail? So I think it was. I think he gets out next, two, next Tuesday. No. Yeah, he's still. Oh, Ross. No. Oh, geez. Se- seven years. Was I thought it, it was days? just five. I mean, I don't know. Go ahead. You uh, can clarify. Dickie, you can Four tell us. Four nights? Really? Double day. Yes. Yeah, so uh, tell us about that. And uh, Kenny Colesback sent me a text. And uh, Blaze's car number. His own. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about. Thank you there, Kenny. Uh, I meant to ask you. He said Blaze's um, car number is on every J- Jimmy Johnson car. Yep. So, and Jimmy, and I didn't realize that until I had uh, Marlon Yoder on the show. Marlon Yoder won again. Yes. Second win. Let's see he that. won at Hickory. Set two out of two now. How about seen that? that. Now, that's cool. Now, mm-hmm. at some point, in a Marlin, if you're watching, I told you I'd do this. <laughs> the elephant in the room is that his girlfriend, Sarah, who he's been with for three or four years, I guess, has been somewhat saying, once you get this late model car fixed, I want an engagement ring. Uh-oh. And set up. So he's got the thing. And we were we were told him that he might just want, at the first test, you might just want to spin it out. <laughs> nice. So he goes out the first race and he wins. Yeah, he won Tri County, then he won yep, Hickory. Yep. Yep. And, and the first thing I look for is no ring there. <laughs> nice. Now, what we told him is the reason he was run, out running the other guys is because the other guys had to use the, a lot of their money for an engagement ring. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, that's true. So, so ding dong and. <laughs> Yeah. Elephant in the room, nice. Marlon. No excuse now. <laughs> Dickie said 45 yes. days. 45 days? 45 days in jail. Wow. Mm-hmm. 45? 45. He probably, they probably wanted him out after seven. He decided to stay in <laughs> a pretty good cow. deal. I bet he learned a lot. Yeah, I thought he said 40, but 45. Yeah, 45. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Jimmy had that That's number on his on the front of his car ever since that happened. Or it had BR, you know, Blaze's initials. Okay. And then, uh, unfortunately, after we the, the plane crash happened, mm-hmm. and they, you know, Jimmy added the uh, tell number of the RH five zero seven. It was, I believe, is what the tell number was. Mm-hmm. You know, in memory of all them, but it's always been right below the left headlight. Yeah. Ever since, so I gave Jimmy a little reminder. Uh, I was down there doing that, uh, helping them with that Carvana commercial that just came out yesterday. Okay. Of the timeline of like the old dirt bike and the off-road truck, all that. And I told Jimmy, I said, you're missing one thing on this car. And he's like, what? I said, you're missing the BR sticker. Oh. So I, I don't know if he kept it in mind to help put it back on there to mm-hmm. transfer it over to that car. But uh, I did remind him of it. Yeah, so. that's cool, man. And I remember him winning, I believe it was the first time when he won at Pocono uh, yep. when Jimmy won. Yep. And he talked about Blaze. And... um I don't know. I'm getting mind blank again. There was something else I wanted to mention that had to do with that, but uh, anyway, I'll, it'll come back to me. So, um, yeah, old Blaze. He, oh, that's what it was. Whenever I was telling you about the picture I put on Twitter, yep. That that uh, Brad Keselowski commented he was a fan, and then and then Jimmy commented. He said I, he wasn't sure. Uh, I did a screenshot of it the other day because it popped up on my Twitter. Uh, he wasn't sure about. Uh, if, if Blaze loved uh, racing more or the women, the ladies, <laughs> you know, because Blaze was a – he was a character. I mean, any girls that come around – and sometimes I would just be sitting there on the plane or whatever, and then here comes uh, this girl. And I'm like, who was that? You well, know? that's, and that's like, how Jimmy and Blaze actually met. Oh, yeah. They were at a autograph signing, mm-hmm. uh, some function or whatever, and Jimmy had a girlfriend there. Yeah. And well, Blaze started hitting on Jimmy's girlfriend. Uh-oh. Okay. So that, that that's how Jimmy and Blaze actually met. Yes. And then it just be all became you yes. know they became buddies after that mm-hmm. you know. But um, 
I remember she went to the track a lot too. Um, she was blonde. I just don't remember. Her I name, believe her name was Amy. Amy, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, Jimmy's yeah. first girlfriend that he brought to the track oh. when he started out. I remember her. Yep. Yeah. She looked like a cowgirl with them jeans. Good looking blonde. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. No, Blaze. Blaze. Blaze was a a womanizer. He was. Mm-hmm. He was funny. Yeah. You know, we had good times. We used to always go to rocking and racing and sit there and out there on one fifty and. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that was Blouse, his favorite spot, man. That was right down the road from his yeah. house, and you, that's where you would. Yes, and they just would tore that building down about a they month just ago. Tore that down. whole field yeah. there, it's just yep. terrible. That was gone. Yeah, it was just ba- it was a battery place after that. Yep. Yeah, I used to go there and do karaoke all the time. Oh, okay, cool. I did yes, and um, so they used to have well, turkey bowling there. There was a uh, turkey bowling. Oh yeah, frozen turkeys. Okay, wow. <laughs> bowling with frozen <laughs> turkeys. Really? Oh, that's yeah. funny. <laughs> wow. Uh, Ryan McMahon says, ask Jared about his favorite old-time country music star. <laughs> That's my brother-in-law. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice. Um, old-time country music star. That's what it says. Ask him so, about his favorite old-time country music star. Maybe it has to do with you. Do, maybe did it's you an do, inside joke. Did you do karaoke? No, I okay. don't sing. Uh, you keep me away from that. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, did. <laughs> I did a lot of that over there. But. I might have to think on that one for a minute here. Well, think about that a second. I remember being at Myrtle Beach Speedway, and I was standing there talking with, because uh, I remember thinking at the time, I was like, you know what, I'm I'm standing here talking to, to the up-and-coming drivers that are going to be like the next, and it was Ricky Hendrick, and it was Blaze Alexander, and it was Jimmy Johnson. We were standing there before the race and just talking and chit-chatting, not knowing that we were going to lose two of them, you know. Right. But, and that Jimmy was going to go on to win seven, seven championships. Right. I mean, it's just amazing. He answered. He said R- Willie Nelson. Oh yeah, I, I like Willie. There you go. Yep. There you go. We'll have to play some Willie Nelson right after the show goes off. But, but uh, you just won't be able to hear it on my YouTube because <laughs> YouTube will say that's content that's and you know, doesn't belong to you. <laughs> yes. Copyright strike. Yep. Uh, so uh, R.D. Ford says, "Great listening, Jarrett Johnson. Thank you for sharing. Not at all. So good night to you as well." He's up in um, New Hampshire. Yes. I got it right. Yes. I always say Michigan for some reason. I yep. thought it was Rhode Island, but maybe it's Yeah, New something Hampshire. like that. I always get it wrong, too. Yeah. All right. So what, what's next? All right. If people want to, let's say, get in touch with you or if they, the video you were just talking about posting, you had that on your Facebook, if I'm not mistaken, right? The Carvana commercial? Where sponsors want yeah, to I reach put, out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I put that right. on. Uh, that was on the Facebook stuff. I don't know how to transfer this stuff to Instagram yet, so I'm not keeping yeah. up with technology. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, it's on the Facebook stuff. But, uh I imagine if you Google, you know, the new Carvana commercial, it's, it'll be on there. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So, but, um, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's fun. We, uh, enjoy doing it. And it's funny. We're there at the speedway for that commercial shoot. We were there for almost three days. And then the commercial is only a minute long. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. That's how it goes. Isn't it? A lot of work, pushing cars back and forth, back and forth, photos, doing this. Mm-hmm. I mean, and then you work for three days and turns into a one minute segment yeah, it makes I you wonder where all the so, so uh yeah here's a question a for you didn't yeah. you race at cmmc yep. years ago yep the it's big question i'd be honest what was on the back of your helmet <laughs> j-rat okay your mom wanted to know that. yeah j-rat that was my nickname because i used to have <laughs> j-rat a, yep i used to have a, a, rat, a rat tail, tail? Oh. and so uh, i got a new helmet and dad and mom got a guy to a paint it so there was this rat with these big old ears and big old eyeball, eyeballs on a dirt bike so oh that was pretty cool yeah that is well i remember when i was a kid in the 1900s yeah. there was a thing called rat fink yep was it it wasn't like rat fink was it no no okay. no, no oh yeah uh rachel mentions that willie's here at wame yeah we'll have to get your uh, picture with willie I don't know where he's at right now. Though. Yeah, Dolly's he's hidden somewhere. Dolly's usually out here. I saw Billy. Oh, I think he's taking a nap on the counter over there. That's where it is, yes. <laughs> yeah. I think your mom's and, asking a question, yeah. too. She said, what was on the back of your the, motorcycle helmet when he was that. racing at CMMC? That's what we were just talking about gotcha. was, the, was the rat yeah, she on was, the back of my helmet riding a dirt bike. Oh, okay. I proposed it as though it was my secret question. Oh, <laughs> I see. Was side pitch, you know, right? You might want to know. <laughs> so, yeah, Rachel's asking a question now. Tracy, you got that? Um... What is Jarrett's favorite Jimmy commercial? Oh, boy. Um, the, the ESPN one, you know, like what uh, Ganassi just did, redid it, was uh, him breaking the, the speed bump outside of the studio. It was, was pretty good. Um, 
<laughs> I didn't see that. Yeah, there's there there's been quite a few of them, but that's the first one that pops up into mind. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, hey, what do y'all think about spinning the wheel to see who wins our prize this week? Prize winning time. So here we go. Ready? Time for a winner. Yeah. All right, and our wheel is secretly color coded with all of our listeners' names on them, and we don't have repeat winners yet. Not so, yet. Not yes. Yeah, so there we go. It's a it's a light blue, and who is our winner today? There, Tracy. Brian Spencer. All right, Brian Spencer up in Pennsylvania. So I don't know if I have your email address yet, Brian, but go on to my website, Dham I Am, and click on the box that pops up there and give me your email address and your mailing address, and I will get that prize in the mail to you. I've met Brian before. He come down and we hung out. Come down all the way from Pennsylvania. Saw my dad. Oh yeah, her. So do you know Tracy's dad? I don't know if we talked about that before, but his her dad was Kenny Thompson, K- okay. KT, that uh, built all the. Still is her dad. Ones. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know why I say it like that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so he he built all the hitters for NASCAR back in the day, and and he built the uh, smoking the bandit cars and uh, worked at Prairie Gant for so many years. But pretty much everybody that I have in here knows who he is. That'd be a good show. Your dad and Harry Gant sitting there. Wouldn't it be? Oh, yeah. I wish I could get um, my dad on, but he, I don't know. He just won't do it. He's very shy. Mm-hmm. Her brother very shy. He could sit behind and the banner brother. then. Sit like, behind the banner. Yeah, <laughs> like the dating <laughs> game or something. Yeah. Well, dad has been on TV. Um, yeah, he's who's, done the guy that, who's the guy that interviewed him, David? I uh, forgot his name. Yeah, I don't remember either, but it's, he's done. It starts with an E. There's a, I don't know. Or just videos. tell him it's a radio show. It's not TV. Don't oh, tell yeah, him. Oh, yeah, I've told him. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah, or, <laughs> that's it. It's just a radio Her brother won't come on either, so he's kind of the same way. Dan. Yep. He worked in NASCAR, too. Dan Thompson. Yeah, so. Report to the studio. Yeah, there you go. Rachel asks, uh, any words of wisdom or guidance you can share? This is to you. Uh, any word of uh, guidance you can share with the fans about what racing has taught you that can help with everyday life? Oh, man. Don't throw batteries. That's a tough one. Don't throw batteries. Um, (laughs) There's so much goes behind it is, um, I mean, treat everybody as, you know, the way you want to be treated, you you know, kindness. Um, Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am is pretty big in our family. Um, And being thankful is the biggest thing. And uh, if you have a goal set and, you know, you want to achieve that goal, uh, I mean, fight for it Mm -hmm. and, and just keep on digging. So... There's my words of wisdom. Mm-hmm. That's about as far as I can go with it. But well, that says a lot, though. You know, right. respect and integrity means a right. lot. Right, right, and that's that's the way it goes a long ways, and that's how way we're we're born and raised. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's just it's you, you need to. Um, mm-hmm. You know, everybody says Jimmy's vanilla, and you know this that, but shit. Excuse me. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> no, he's just, I'm, I'm surprised I haven't said that yet. I've been around him since he was a, a rookie, and he's just the oh. same person as he was. He's right. just as, as cordial, polite, well-mannered. Right. Mm-hmm. He's not arrogant in the slightest. Right. But if you met him on the street and didn't know who you who he was, you wouldn't right. sense any of And that's the way I see it with him is, you, you know, treating people with respect and, yeah. and all that. That's That's got him a long ways in his career Gosh also. knows what he would have been without your mother and right. father. But, right, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, who knows? That's right. No, yes. I don't just remember what people. artist said it, but they said it's because of the fans that they have a job. Absolutely. You know? I totally agree with that. If there was no fans, they wouldn't have a job. Exactly. I well, think it was Dolly and, Parton, and, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah and, and one th- another thing about Jimmy is like whenever we flew up there to, to golf uh, in Pennsylvania and for uh, it was for Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yep. And, you know, he was he was really wanting to golf. I mean, we knew that. But, you know, part of one of his things was to kind of hang out at the hole and meet and greet with people yep. and that kind of stuff. And, I mean, he did it with class. And, uh, you know, he, every time I've been around him, he's just always been very nice. Yeah, he's a good very, dude. Very good. I yes. saw him last May out of GoPro. Yeah, he's been tuning up and stuff. And yeah, he's been wheeling go karts nonstop, yeah. trying to get ready for that Indy car. Yeah, and a uh, lot of those drivers are out there. Yeah, so. but uh, I mean, heck, he's got his kid go karts now. They're they're messing around yep. with him and all yep. that good stuff. So yep. it's fun, father daughter time. Yeah, there you oh, go. Yeah. Very good. So uh, somebody asked, what, "Where were we going to Talladega?" So Jake McVie, we were going to go to Talladega because when Natalie Decker was on here, we were like, "Hey, 
y'all come down to Talladega and we'll, and I told him about my little story riding in the back of a pickup around Talladega infield, you know, and kind of crazy stories. Actually one involves Ivan. I'm going to jump all over the place here. Uh, I'll go to that first, but we're going to be down in Key West. So we're going to miss Talladega this time, but we're, I talked to, uh, to, to who was it the other day? Anyway, got with Natalie's people and we're going to end up going to Nashville. So just so you know, we're going to Nashville. We're going to redo that party over in Nashville. So, um, and and by the way, uh, Natalie just liked our Racing Roots with Ham page on Facebook. So go on there and like that page so you know every time we do this show. Uh, but the other thing I was going to mention was we were riding around Talladega in the infield, and Ivan Scopatone was in the back seat of the van, and, and I was driving us around. And then I was like, we were following this pickup truck, had two girls in the back, and, of course, they didn't have tops on. Or they had them on, but not for long, you know, riding through Talladega. There's a lot of crazy stuff that goes on down there. And uh, – so I had the windshield washers, and I, was, I had them aimed to where I could shoot water on the people. <laughs> you know, you when I go by, I sort of, yeah. And uh, I had them done that way before I even like going down seventy or eighty-five. You know, whatever I was doing it, shouldn't have done stuff like that. Whatever. Right. So I ran through the infield, and I did it to one of these guys who was like passed out on the lawn chair, and he was holding a coke, and he he as soon as he got wet. He took that Coke and just tossed it, and it went right in the van and landed right on Ivan. Nice. I should have asked Ivan about that when I had him nice. on his phone. But <laughs> we were down there one night at Talladega, and we, uh, me, Jimmy, and Casey Mears, we went out there on Jimmy's golf cart. Mm-hmm. And the next thing you know, people recognized them, and it was, it was, it got pretty crazy. Just like what you're saying. I mean, tops are flying off. I'm like, Jimmy's like, get me out of here. Yeah. You know, hitting the gas, <laughs> walking uh, the exactly. horn. I mean, it was. It was it was pretty intense. So so he didn't say um, if somebody asked for his autograph. Now I, I walked around with a guy one time that was one of the tire change or one of the tire carriers, and these two girls come up and they're like, "Hey, would you sign? Would you sign my shirt for me?" And he's like, "I only sign body parts, you know." Oh my! <laughs> so, I, and I turned like I don't have any shades sure of red, right? Because I just got embarrassed just pretty did. quick. Like you just did, yes. <laughs> Uh, Rachel says, if you could preserve a part of NASCAR for future generations, what would you save? For future generations? The restrictor um, plate. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, uh, the cars from the, uh, say, 2010 era. Yeah. When the bodies were handmade, mm-hmm. wheeled out. I mean, it's, I miss those cars. That's what Tracy's dad used to do. Yeah, he's yeah. a fabricator. Yeah, it, it, there was so much talent that went into those building those cars. It's absolutely amazing, mm-hmm. absolutely amazing. They're beautiful, and and now it's just it's just from the outside looking in, it feels like it's just bolt on pieces. Yeah, it's right. like snapped together. You don't put a model together like you used to piece by piece. It's right, all snapped together. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I I get it. You know, trying to save money and do this and that, but I just I don't see where they're saving the money on it. You still got to buy these parts. Yeah. From them, from I guess, them. Right. I guess they're saving labor, maybe. I don't right, know, but, but pay no attention to that. Still, man, the, the, <laughs> the, the still, older yeah. style cars around that era were absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely yeah. amazing. They yeah. were they were works of art. Yes. to those guys with English wheels and stuff. Right. right. Oh man. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it would take you know week, you know week and a half to I mean even build one of those cars. All you would get was the the nose. <laughs> hood roof deck lid and bumper cover yeah. and the rest of it it was all i mean you're wheeling all the front fenders yeah. out i mean quarter panels a post like the B model post. cars the model kit cars. yeah it's <laughs> it was amazing those cars are amazing oh yeah her dad built one for uh, i think it was a 1956 indianapolis uh streamline car or something like that the red one yeah, yeah just built it from scratch i mean the whole car wow. i think there was only maybe a few things on there that he didn't build because somebody asked him, "Hey, so what did you, what did you not build on?" He said, "I did everything. I mean, like everything." Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. Uh, Speaking of practical jokes, David. Yes. What is my favorite thing to do with you when you're working on a car? Uh, well, oh. Which, when you're under the hood. Uh, whenever I'm bent over or As what? Under the hood, like when you're working on beep it. Beep the horn. Tell, yeah. <laughs> always oh, beep the yeah. horn nice. on him. <laughs> yeah. Or, or if I'm if I'm bent over and my shirt comes up my back a little bit, she likes to take a little piece of something and try to irritate me down right. there. You know, Ice right. cube. And she won't stop. I'm like, come on now. I'm, That's I just, love. Nice. You know, I'm adjusting a carburetor. I'm right. doing something precise, and then here's See? something crawling in my my butt. <laughs> uh, she's just letting me know she's there. Right. I guess, yeah. Right. So, 
I don't guess butt is against FCCs. No. You know. <laughs> Bottom side. Yeah, so. All right, so if y'all have any more questions, throw them out here at us because we're coming down to the last minutes here. We've got Jarrett Johnson on with us from um, – Jared Johnson Motorsports. <laughs> Mel Cajon, California. El Cajon. El Cajon. I like when the announcers used to call it El Cajun. Oh. Yes. Oh, wow. It happens so many times. <laughs> yes. Before the start sure. of the race, they would mount and now, just start an order or whatever. El Cajun. Oh. Now, it seems like, okay, so I, here's what, it, whenever I was replaying, and by the way, we have our MRN Classic Races coming up every Saturday night at 6 o'clock, uh, which I host and then do the bits in between and in the end. we got Talladega 2000 coming up this Saturday. But whenever I hear the names, they introduce the drivers, and they always say, like, from Modesto, California, then I'll say, like, Ernie or, or, or something like that, or Shemung, New York, you know, Jeff Bodine. And it, I just automatically, because I listened to it for so many years and qualifying and all that kind of stuff. Right. But was Ernie kind of near where you were from? Or was Ernie that, was more north. North. Okay. Yeah, he was probably – He's near Sonoma. Yeah, he was, like, seven hours north of from where we were. Where okay. we were. Yeah. You know, Mears was from Bakersfield. That was – Four or five hour drive. Harvick's from Bakersfield. Harvick, Bakersfield. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Southern California, where Ernie and Jeff, Ernie's up near where Jeff is from more. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was going to say Jeff Gordon was from Ernie. there. Yeah, they're, they're pretty far up there. I believe yeah. Larson's from up that area also. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I really can't put a finger on mm-hmm. anybody that was really south of LA, you know, that's made it to the top ranks no. there. Yeah. No. Hmm. All right. So, yeah, speaking of Larson, it's, it was good to kind of see him come back and and come back in and do absolutely i totally mm-hmm. agree mm-hmm. you know i hate, hate that happened to him um he learned from his mistake he proved he mm-hmm. you know that shouldn't have happened yeah and uh kid's a wheel man i mean yeah he is he's a wheel man so for sure yeah, it's pretty cool and another thing i wanted to mention today was uh would have been robert yates's 78th birthday mm-hmm. so and, and his brother richard is still with us and he he's 78 today so, so happy birthday happy richard. Birthday. birthday y'all and it's jack roush yes i saw that on some kind of media. I don't remember if he was a year older. Or something Jack's like birthday. That. Yeah, Jack's Jack birthday today too. Yeah, we always had a we always had a big fish fry or something uh, for their birthdays. Right. Like that's one thing when I was working at Roush Yates, I was there 16 years. We ate good. We right. always ate good. And one of my favorite times was whenever they would bring in that fish frying truck from over in the Matthews area. I don't remember what it was, but anyway, they would cook up all kinds of fish and oysters and shrimp and da 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 da. So very good. So your mom says uh, Kathy. El Cajon mean the box. El Cajun mean the box. No. <laughs> El, Ca- El, El Cajon um, means hold on. the box. Yes, he said goodnight, all great podcast. Well, thank you all. Thank you for tuning in. And Connor Johnson, what's your favorite race car from the NASCAR series? Uh, from the NASCAR series, um, I would say it would have to be the, the, the nationwide cars, you know, that I drove. Um, yeah. It was weird sitting in those trucks because the roof's so high. Um, but, uh, you know, from that side of it, you know, I had a blast in those nationwide cars. Sure. Yep. And, uh, Dickie Dennis says, can I get a hero card from Jared? <laughs> Wait, mm-hmm. I don't know that he has any. And Dickie, you need your own hero card too, by the way. <laughs> so <Why not>? He <laughs> does. You send me one. I'll, I'll, I'll dig one out of the remember brilliant and send it to you. There you so, go. That's cool. Uh, and Jake McVee says Larson and Stewart were at Williams Grove last Friday. He did what? They were at Williams Grove last Friday, Larson okay. and Stewart. Oh, yeah. All right. So um, I guess it's time to wrap it up, y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. And if you're tuned in on 92.9 and 550, you can tune in tomorrow morning for the Billy Buck Morning Show with a side of ham. I'll be here at 6 a.m. or 6.10-ish, depending on when I can crawl out of bed. <laughs> crawl out of bed about 5. Uh, but I've been up till midnight the past two two nights. But don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. That way you – and hit the bell notification yeah. if you want to be notified – that whenever we go live every week, it'll be uh, me, Phil, and Tracy in here. Are we in? You're going and to the Keys. When, are we doing it next Monday? Yeah, I'm tell you what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to put a video together, and I'm going to schedule it to play out, and we can do like a premiere. So I can have it scheduled to play, and I could do a premiere. I may have someone come in here and play it on the radio. Haven't decided yet. Uh, but when I you come can just back, throw the keys to me. I'll come in here. And we'll have a heck of a party, everybody. <laughs> Call them in, in here. Yeah, that's a good idea. But when I come back, I, I talked to. Um, let's see. Gosh, who have I got lined up? Tracy. I don't remember. Well, I've got several people um, lined up to come in, 
And uh, yeah, we got we got Mario and Treddy coming in. Yeah, well, yeah, that's um, the ticket. Mario's coming. Yeah, so we'll we'll get to that. <laughs> yes, the best way to find out is to go on the Racing Roots with Ham Facebook page, and that's pretty much where I put all the information. I'm gonna actually gonna put a calendar together. And Roots is R O U T E S. Yeah, R O U T E S. And the reason why I spell it that way is because I spelt it with two O's. And when I did a Twitter post and I said Racing Roots, they said this post may contain sensitive content. Imagine that. Wow. So I had to change it to a R-O-U. Never had any issues since. Wow. I guess because of the, the Roots movie, whatever, you know, uh, which is crazy, but that's the way it is nowadays. You know how it is nowadays. Yes. It's racing routes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, right. Hey, but I'm part Australian, so it's a route to me. Right. right. And uh, speaking of Australian, what's up? Jim Dooley's up in Virginia. So uh, thanks, Paul and Jim, Jake. Scott Travis and down in Florida, and we're looking forward to going down on the Sea Tunes. Scott's got a really nice boat out there on Sea Tunes. So, but uh, yes, thanks to Billy Buck and W A M E and all that stuff, and thanks to our listeners. And uh, y'all have a great night, and we will see y'all tomorrow morning. You will see them. That's right, I will. Good night. Ninety-two point nine W A M E Statesville. Mm, if you've had an accident, what would you do next? We'll take your vehicle to Statesville Collision Center for fast, certified collision repair. They specialize in bodywork, custom paint, collision repair, and much more. Their iCar trained and certified technicians will get your vehicle back to its factory look and specifications. Come meet the friendly, knowledgeable staff at Statesville Collision Center. They work with all insurance companies and guarantee all of the work they perform. Statesville Collision Center, 114 Victory Lane in Statesville, or call 704 704- 881-0410. When you live a busy life, it's hard to keep your floors clean and in good condition. Well, you can rely on Terry's Carpet Care to take care of your home or business so that you can focus on things that are more important. Terry's is your local and trusted floor cleaning service for over 40 years. And Terry's cleans carpet, tile, grout, hardwoods, LVT and CVT floors. And they're ready to help bring your floors back to life. Call for a free estimate today, 704-872-9861. That's 704-872-9861. And check them out on Facebook at Terry's Carpet Care. If you don't know our host, David Hamm, he's a 25-year NASCAR veteran and engine builder and jackman. If you don't know me, my name is Phil Cavalli. I was a 30-year NASCAR photographer. 30-year NASCAR photographer. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> okay. And I'm building engines with uh, a Mattel. Yes, Mattel. <laughs> yeah, for Mattel. Lego blocks. Yeah. Live every Monday evening, we have a new guest. From the racing world with their stories, their paths, their, their racing, racing roots. roots. Sponsored by Jersey Cape Yachts. Check them out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and their YouTube channel. Also on JerseyCapeYachts.com. Check out Chad Hyder as he pilots the Canadian eMotorsports Network, Racing Roots with Ham Ford, 7.30 every Tuesday evening on Facebook. Check out my website, dhamiam.com. Be sure to hit that subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you'll be notified every time we go live. Country 550 and 